Now let's learn about the arteries supplying the heart. The heart is supplied by two coronary arteries arising from the ascending aorta that is the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery. Now let's learn each one of them in detail. First let's look at the right coronary artery. The right coronary artery is smaller than the left coronary artery. It arises from the anterior aortic sinus of the ascending aorta. Now let's look at its course. It first passes forwards and to the right to emerge on the surface of the heart between the root of the pulmonary trunk and the right auricle right here. It then runs downward in the right anterior coronary sulcus to the junction of the right and the inferior borders right here. It winds around the inferior border to reach the diaphragmatic surface of the heart. Now this is the diaphragmatic surface. So the right coronary artery winds around the inferior border to reach the diaphragmatic surface of the heart. Here it runs backwards and to the left in the right posterior coronary sulcus to reach the posterior interventricular group. The right coronary artery terminates by anastomosing with the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery as you can see right here. Now let's look at the branches of the right coronary artery. First there is the atrial branch that is here is one atrial branch here is another atrial branch. There is anterior, posterior and lateral atrial branches. Second is the ventricular branch that has an anterior group for the sternocostal surface and a posterior group that traverses the diaphragmatic surface. After the atrial and ventricular branch there is a right marginal artery right here. Oh. And the final branch is the posterior interventricular branch right here. Now let's look at the area of distribution of the right coronary artery. It supplies the right atrium, the ventricles that is the greater part of the right ventricle except the area adjoining the anterior interventricular group. It also supplies a small part of the left ventricle adjoining the posterior interventricular group. It also supplies the posterior one third of the interventricular septum. And finally, the right coronary artery also supplies the whole of the conducting system of the heart that we learnt earlier except a part of the left branch of the AV bundle. Concising the important points under the arteries supplying the heart, the heart is supplied by two coronary arteries arising from the ascending aorta. First there is the right coronary artery. The right coronary artery is smaller than the left coronary artery. It arises from the anterior aortic sinus of the ascending aorta. Looking at its course, it first passes forwards and to the right to emerge on the surface of the heart between the root of the pulmonary trunk and the right auricle. It then runs downwards in the right anterior coronary sulcus to the junction of the right and inferior borders of the heart. It winds around the inferior border to reach the diaphragmatic surface of the heart. Here, it runs backwards and to the left in the right posterior coronary sulcus to reach the posterior interventricular group. Finally, it terminates by anastomosing with the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery at the crux. Looking at the branches, it has the atrial branch, ventricular branch, right marginal artery and posterior interventricular branch. The atrial branch has anterior, posterior and lateral branches. The ventricular branch has an anterior group that supplies the sternocostal surface and posterior group on, that traverses the diaphragmatic surface. Looking at the area of distribution of the right coronary artery, supplies the right atrium, the ventricles, that is a greater part of the right ventricle, except the area adjoining the anterior interventricular group and a small part of the left ventricle adjoining the posterior interventricular group. It supplies the posterior one-third of the interventricular septum and whole of the conducting system of the heart except a part of the left branch of the AV bundle. Now let's learn about the left coronary artery. The left coronary artery is larger than the right coronary artery. It arises from the left posterior aortic sinus of the ascending aorta. Looking at the course, the artery first runs forwards and to the left and emerges between the pulmonary trunk and the left auricle right here. Here it gives the anterior interventricular branch. Further continuation of the left coronary artery is called the circumflex artery. After giving off the anterior interventricular branch, the artery runs to the left in the left coronary sulcus. It winds around the left border of the heart right here and continues in the left posterior coronary sulcus. Here is a posterior view, the left coronary artery 
winds around the left border of the heart and continues in the left posterior coronary sulcus. Near the posterior interventricular groove, it terminates by anastomosing with the right coronary artery. Looking at the branches of the left coronary artery, we have the anterior interventricular branch and the circumflex branch. Looking at the area of distribution of the left coronary artery, it supplies the left atrium and the left ventricle except the posterior interventricular groove. So it supplies the left ventricle except a small part of the posterior interventricular groove. It also supplies the anterior part of the interventricular septum and part of the left branch of the AV bundle in the conducting system of the heart. Emphasizing the important points under the left coronary artery, the left coronary artery is larger than the right coronary artery. It arises from the left posterior aortic sinus of the ascending aorta. Looking at its course, the artery first runs forwards and to the left and emerges between the pulmonary trunk and the left auricle. Here, it gives the anterior interventricular branch. Further continuation of the left coronary artery is called the circumflex artery. After giving off the anterior interventricular branch, the artery runs to the left in the left anterior coronary sulcus. It winds around the left border of the heart and continues in the left posterior coronary sulcus. Near the posterior interventricular groove, it terminates by anastomosing with the right coronary artery. Looking at the branches, it gives off the anterior interventricular branch and the circumflex branch. Looking at the area of distribution, it supplies the left atrium, the ventricles, that is the left ventricle, except the posterior interventricular groove and a small part of the right ventricle. It supplies the anterior part of the interventricular septum and part of the left branch of the AV bundle. Finally, looking at the veins of the heart, this is the sternocostal surface, this is the diaphragmatic surface. Let's look at the coronary sinus first. It is the largest vein of the heart. It is situated in the left posterior coronary sulcus. It is about 3 cm long and ends by opening into the posterior wall of the right atrium. It receives the following tributaries. It receives the great cardiac vein that you see right here, the middle cardiac vein, the small cardiac vein, the posterior vein of the left ventricle, the oblique vein of the left atrium right here. It is a small vein running on the posterior surface. It is also called the oblique vein of left atrium of Marshall. And finally, the right marginal vein that accompanies the marginal branch of the right coronary artery. Then we have the anterior cardiac veins. They are three or four small veins that run parallel to one another. Finally, we have the vena cordis minimi or Thebaisian veins or smallest cardiac veins. They are numerous small valveless veins present in all the four chambers of the heart. Concising the important points under the veins of the heart. First, let's look at the coronary sinus. It is the largest vein of the heart. It is situated in the left posterior coronary sulcus. It is about 3 cm long and ends by opening into the posterior wall of the right atrium. It receives the following tributaries. The great cardiac vein, middle cardiac vein, small cardiac vein, posterior vein of left ventricle, oblique vein of left atrium of Marshall and finally the right marginal vein. Then we have the anterior cardiac veins. There are three or four small veins which run parallel to one another. And finally, there is the venae cordis minimi. The venae cordis minimi or the Thebaisian veins or smallest cardiac veins are numerous small valveless veins present in all the four chambers of the heart. I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes of heart as well as other topics of anatomy, physiology, psychology, pathology, biomechanics and pharmacology, visit my Instagram page, the link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.